Hi there, I'm Joe Milne, I'm a technology journalist and I'm here at InsureTech Rising and I'm joined by Reza Hershiri, who's the Chief Scientist at AIG. Reza, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about AI and machine learning, because this is your area of expertise. Um, are people embracing it fast enough? What does it mean for the insurance industry? Give us a little bit of a top line. Sure. Um, so in general, uh, the concept of AI existed for, for decades, but what made it really exciting today is the fact that um, a subset of AI, which is called machine learning, is becoming more and more a reality. By that, I mean the subset of AI where machines can learn from data directly. And, um, and that has become possible through a few key changes um, in, in the landscape that AI operates in. One of the biggest changes is the availability of large volumes of data, particularly through digitization, through um, uh, uh, various internet industries and uh, in the industry businesses and so on, and, and as well as the um, kind of huge advances in the computation. Uh, computers became a lot more powerful, a lot faster, and data became much, much larger, and the two together made a lot of the old algorithms even work better. And also that itself led to a lot of further advances on the algorithmic side and also usability side. Um, so, so fundamentally, machine learning is what is driving uh, a lot of this trend, and um, and it's and of course it's 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 a reality, unlike what a lot of people tend to think that it's another tech hype or something. Uh, it's a reality, and we know it based on what we see. We see computers can see better than human in a lot of tasks, like in radiology and so on. We see computers can translate, for example, and read better than human in a lot of tasks. Uh, we see computers can learn strategy, evident from the work that DeepMind did in, in the AlphaGo uh, they developed. And so all these things together makes us uh, uh, believe that AI uh, and, and machine learning is, is, is a big reality that, uh, that we are seeing. Its impact is being felt in a lot of areas, like we've got Siri on our iPhone that we could talk to and, and order things and, and, and ask us to do tasks for us. Uh, we have uh, right now search engines that are operating based on a lot of uh, data-driven algorithms um, and, and the list goes on and autonomous cars and various other things are about to uh, come to our society. So fundamentally, um, we, we saw AI to a level that is delivering superhuman performance and we should be excited about it improving various industries and of course insurance is no exception. Now, is insurance one of the fastest adopt, uh, kind of, is one of the fastest industry, industries in adopting AI? Probably not because of the nature of it. It's, it's basically um, the way AI evolved has touched a lot of uh, industries that insurers are insuring rather than the core of insurance industry. But I think the trend was strong enough that now most insurers are kind of um, uh, embracing it and trying to make sure that they, they they reimagine and innovate uh, components of their business um, based on the new, tr the, the new power that AI brings to the picture. So you talked a little bit about the industries that you insure against, and you, men you mentioned a little bit healthcare earlier, you talked about radiology. Um, talk to us a little bit about the changes in this world of healthcare and how that is going to affect the world of healthcare insurance, because it's a massive industry that looks like it could be totally yeah. revolutionized. Absolutely. I think. Medicine is, in, if you look at most countries' um, economy, medicine usually sits next to military spend and, and some of the biggest spends are, and, and maybe the first or the second components of the GDP in a lot of these countries. So, so an industry as big as that, uh, not being the frontier of every tech, every efficiency driver and so on, should be a surprise. But partly it's understandable because uh, we don't want to take big risk as, as the early adopter of everything um, by, by putting humans at risk. But I think AI in a lot of areas showed the promise of uh, being de-risked enough that medicine could um, look at it favorably. In medicine, one of the most amazing things that is happening right now is that the notion of what is medical data is being challenged. So like in the past, we thought that medical data is clear. It's medical images, it's your blood tests, it's those sort of stuff. But then what we are seeing right now is that actually the voice that we speak with, if recorded with a high quality, if analyzed with the right algorithm, could predict are we at a stage of fatigue or are we having an onset of a certain mental health issue or uh, things of that nature. Or like for example, we saw that for example Apple Watch, uh, by collecting your heartbeat and, and mobility data quite frequently, has the ability to predict the onset of atrial fibrillation quite accurately. So in a way, the data that we never thought of as medical data uh, in, in a classic sense is now becoming predictive of medical outcomes and, and medical 
um, kind of uh, prognosis and so on. So in that sense, I think it's, it's a very big shift that what is medical data and as a result, what are the medical skills associated with that data? There is obviously lots of changes in, in medicine, but what does that mean for insurers? Is it saving cost? Is it making things, um, you know, we're having more data that we can do analysis on? Is it, you know, you know, there's a lot of questions around having too much data, making people uninsurable if you have these images. Mm -hmm. um, when a person is fine right now, but saying that it's going to be highly predictive, uh, then not being able to get covered. What does it mean for the world of insurance? That's a great question because I think a lot of the time people um, think that th this level of um, uh, kind of predictive power could be harmful to the insurance value chain. I mean, it, it's not that there is no way it could go wrong. If, if it's um, not designed appropriately, it could lead to a lot of these sort of issues. But I think that's not the only way it can go. That there are a lot of better ways it could be uh, thought of. For instance. Um, Think about, I mean, let's start with the first question of what is the big impact on insurance? So in insurance, I mean, th there are a few key components uh, of, of expertise that makes an insurance company stand out. One is the, 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 the expertise around the risk, like in the medical case, the medical risk, like the risk of mortality, the risk of a disease, the risk of admission to a hospital, various risks of that nature. So if insurance, if an insurer knows those sort of stuff really well, they're in a very unique position to be competitive in the market. The second thing is their ability to, to handle claims and, 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 and deliver a customer experience in the claim area. Like for example, if every time something happens, in order for you to establish if it was a fraud or not, if it was a claim within the policy or not, and, and also all the paperwork and so on becomes a nightmare, so, and, and there is an insurer who could simplify that extremely, then they've got an edge in the market. The, the, the third component here is Th their ability to mitigate risk. So in a way, I think th this third component, of course, there, there are a lot of operational and, and, and so on as well, that uh, efficiencies that an insurance company could have. But fundamentally, th th the third one, the third component, in addition to underwriting and claim around risk mitigation is extremely important. And it's becoming more and more the case today in, in insurance business. More insurers are trying to improve that, that capability. And I think health is one of the unique areas in there. I think. Uh, with our ability to collect seamlessly the data that could be of medical information and medical prediction, uh, of, of, uh, could be informing us towards medical uh, prediction, that data collection capability is becoming a, a big change. And that enables us to be able to um, kind of predict the onset of diseases on time and, and then hopefully engage in a mechanism that can uh, mitigate some of these risks and, and stop them from happening. And I, th I think the biggest change as a result of all of these things is that um, it's basically life and health insurance are extremely likely to be mixed up uh, more and more. Uh, I think at the moment life and health insurers are almost separate from each other but I think this, this, this nature, the change of the nature of the business is extremely likely to mix the two up and, and increase the overlap of the two industries quite heavily. And the second biggest change is, of course, the, the, the high touch um, and high engagement and relationship kind of um, driven insurance by insurers and, and, um, and insured are going to be a lot more interactive. And as a result, insurers will enter a bigger spectrum of people's life than just um, go make a claim, I'll pay you kind of relationship. Okay, final very quick question. Sure. Um, why are you in insurance? You know, your background is working with bioinformatics and machine learning. You're obviously very passionate about health. Um, what is it about the insurance industry that kind of makes you work here? It's a good question. Um, when, when I first joined, it, it was just like a, uh, I never had any sort of like extreme passion for insurance when I first joined. And I think the thing about AIG is that it's, it's a huge insurer and it's got a, a diverse set of businesses. So usually as a, as a normal member of the society, when, when you think insurance, you think about the kind of insurance you've done yourself. Like you have car insurance, you have home insurance, and, and it's quite easy to think about an insurance company to be just those sort of stuff. But when you go to a, to a big insurer with a global presence like AIG, particularly a big commercial insurer, what you learn is that actually there are plenty of phenomena around the world that are, are, are of the form of risk and for our society, for ourselves. And, and a lot of insurers are trying to get into those businesses, trying to understand the risk, trying to insure it. So if you're passionate about health, you could pursue a great career in an insurance company. If you're passionate about AI, you could pursue it in an insurance company. If you're passionate about cyber risk, I mean, AIG insures the biggest portfolio of cyber risk in the world. So the list of products we offer in marine, in agriculture, in, in, in various types of um, kind of industries is really huge that in a sense, 
I, I could go as far, I, I, I'm sure that somebody might, might disagree with me, but, but I couldn't go as far as saying any interest you could pursue in an insurance company. But unfortunately, insurers have not done a good job at branding themselves as that. But for us who entered insurance not knowing what we are doing, we went in and we realized, actually, it's, it's a lot more exciting than what we thought. And so in that sense, I think um, I see my reason for staying at AIG to be more of that nature, that I... Uh, we've got an amazing team, we are doing an amazing job, and it's an industry that has got a lot more potential that we can barely touch in the, in the coming years even. Awesome. Thank you very much, Reza. Thank you.